Uh, it continues in the article, Blue Coat deceptively labeled Infowars.com as racist and violent, which would discourage would-be first-time viewers from visiting the site through an unfiltered internet access because they had been led falsely to believe that Infowars promotes violence and hate in complete opposition to the libertarian non-aggression principle. You can't, you can't have earned it better than that. And, and that that's just the whole case to it. We've never promoted violence. We, provo we promote info war. We promote knowledge. We promote healthy living. We promote goodness. Wow. We promote the second amendment. We promote self-defense. We don't promote violence, hate, and racism. Certainly not. But we're being blocked that. And it just takes one company out there to do that, to block it, the access to millions of other people, which is why you need to become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv because your support helps us grow. It helps us continue. It helps to fight off attacks like this. We would get lawyers involved on this because it is not a pretty picture going after these companies. So we sure do appreciate your support at Infowars.com, Infowarsnews.com, and PrisonPlanet.tv. Your support helps us out. And by becoming a member, you can share your username and password with up to 11 different people. So you can have 11 of your friends, well, 10 plus you, on there at the same time watching the reports, downloading the reports, putting them out yourself, putting them on your own YouTube channels, because that's the way we're going to fight the censorship by getting the word out. And we'll be back after this with Dick Cheney and Alex Jones' predictions of the ISIS rebels getting the Stinger missiles that, oh, suddenly they just got. We didn't know. It's the InfoWars Nightly News. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15 percent off super male vitality at infowarslife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement visit infowarslife.com today to secure your super male vitality infowarslife.com Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. Today I'd like to talk about the war on women. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Each of these ingredients works synergistically with the female body in order to maximize overall vitality. You've heard the reviews and the feedback on how the original super male vitality has revitalized relationships. Now, both the man and the woman can have the revitalization in their own bodies with super male vitality and super female vitality. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back. I don't hate too many people in this world. In fact, I like almost everybody. But one person that I truly despise is Dick Cheney. And this week he crawled out of his rat hole along with his beautiful bride wife and wrote The Collapsing Obama Doctrine, an op-ed piece for the Wall Street Journal. In it he said, rarely has a US president been so wrong about so much at the expense of so many. That's right, because you're a vice president. You know, you didn't benefit billions and billions of dollars by having your former company get no bid contracts. You didn't spill the blood of millions of Americans. I'm ta not talking about the ones who just died in the war, but their friends and relatives who had to endure uh, their family members being killed or maimed or injured. No, you didn't benefit from any of that, did you? Look at him. 
Oh, what a disgusting creature. He has the gall to get on and talk about anybody in this world. He, he can't even criticize the devil. That is how disgusting that creature is, Dick Cheney. He is a complete, utter disgrace. But just the fact that he crawled out of his rat hole and had the gall to say all that uh, in the Wall Street Journal is truly disgusting. The man is reprehensible. You know, and it, just going back to 9 11, first you have the commission report where he didn't testify in front of a committee about what he knew and when he knew it. He did it secretly in the Oval Office where there were no transcripts being made because there was supposedly secret information. And then you have the testimony of Norman Mineta, who was the Transportary Secretary at the time. He talks about during his hearing how Cheney was giving stand down orders not to shoot down the plane coming to the Pentagon. And then not to shoot down the plane that later crashed in Shanksville. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, um, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? The when flight that came into the Pentagon. Pentagon. Truly a disgusting piece of work. It was his lies and his scheming that caused all this madness that we've had since 9-11 and even before if you look at the energy bill and stuff he was pushing with uh, Bush. So it just, you know, crawl back in your rat hole, Cheney. We don't need you to talk about anybody. You don't, you don't get to talk about anybody. You are a total failure. You are a disgusting blob creature. Whew. Sorry, got a little overreactionary there, but you know, you gotta call it like you see it. Uh, finally, we're gonna play an excerpt from today's Infowars.com uh, Alex Jones show, where Alex interviews Aaron Klein, WorldNet Daily writer, talking about how uh, the US government set up secret training bases in Jordan and were actually training the ISIS terrorists that are now taking over Iraq. Yeah, they were training them at first to take over Syria and throw, overthrow Bashar al-Assad. And uh, now since they have all the weapons and missiles, they can go anywhere they want. And, um, and then after that, we're gonna come, come straight into Alex Jones' predictions where he predicted that they were gonna be given these missiles and that the threat of them shooting down airliners was gonna be used to take away our rights. And then it cuts to a, a piece of Megyn Kelly just two days ago talking about, oh my God, they have heat seeking missiles and they're gonna shoot down airliners and oh, we better worry, we better be afraid. That's what it's all about with the mainstream media. Be afraid, don't empower yourself crawl in your own rat hole because there is no escape from the terrorist Al Qaeda. And with that, that'll be the, our news of the evening. Glad you could join us. You can reach us here and see us every day, 7 p.m. Central at prisonplanet.tv. Please consider becoming a member if you haven't done so already. And thank you once again for your support. Well, if you, if you want to get to the big picture, uh, first we have the information that ISIS, ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, which, of course, is a front pretty much for al-Qaeda, how they were trained. I actually first reported back in 2012 that the United States, the Americans, were running a training base with Turkey and with some other Arab countries in the Middle East. That It, it was at a secret base in Jordan to train at the time the rebels, the insurgents that were fighting Bashar Assad's regime in Syria. And then, actually, this has since been confirmed by the UK Guardian, by Der Spiegel, by the uh, uh, also Reuters has confirmed. No, that's that right. We had you on at the time. So again, World Net Daily, your sources. This was confirmed then. Yes. Yeah. So we were running a, a training base, in other words, for rebels that are uh, highly connected to Al Qaeda. But at the time, the United States um, finally admitted that they were giving aid to rebels, but said that they were vetting the rebels, the uh, the extremists, let's say, for elements of connections to Al Qaeda. Well, now I have information that we were training. ISIS, not not thousands of, of the ISIS members that are ISIS members that are cur currently right now uh, gaining major ground in Iraq. We're talking here about dozens, but but the larger story actually goes to to Benghazi. Uh, actually, this is a story that I'm going to be breaking a little bit later, but I will first reveal it on this radio show. Uh, on Sunday, we arrested a guy named Ahmed Abu Katala, who is a member of Ansar al-Sharia, senior member of Ansar al-Sharia in, in Libya, wanted for the Benghazi attack. Well, it's a little bit strange that out of nowhere, suddenly we arrest this guy. Because actually, last year, there was U.S. Special Forces were tracking his every move. They were actually 
uh, literally hours, according to CNN and the Washington Post, hours from arresting him. But then all of a sudden, Obama calls for the arrest at the exact same time in Libya of another terrorist. His name's Al Libby. The guy's been wanted since the 80s. He, he operates openly. They could have arrested him at any time. So Al Libby's arrested in this public raid. And then this guy who was just arrested, Katala, uh, is suspected in the Benghazi attack. He hears about it and he goes underground. So all of a sudden, we now arrest him. So I have information, actually, that Katala, again, he's actually, as of uh, his arrest, the most wanted jihadist for the Benghazi attack, the murder of four Americans, including a U.S. ambassador. Well, my information is that Katala, also, again, the most wanted terrorist in Benghazi for the attack, he was working uh, for a nexus that included the United States, Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar, Kuwait, the Arab countries. He was working before the Benghazi attack, in other words, for the United States effort to arm the rebels. Finally, somebody who's really big in the media is talking about something that we have been just screaming and yelling over. And, and McClatchy finally covered it. In fact, will you guys repull that and, and the article out of yesterday's stack uh, where uh, Al Qaeda promises that after Assad falls to attack America uh, with the missiles? This is all in the British and German and French news. With the missiles our government and NATO gave them. Now, that said, France is leading the warmongering drum. Uh, to invade, and there's a U.S. T uh, aircraft carrier and amphibious landing force right off the coast. I, I, this is incredible. And there's U.S. special forces, admittedly, for at least nine months, the 22-month uh, operation against Syria. They're backing up al-Qaeda. But what is Drudge doing? It's up at Infowars.com. He sends it out on his at Drudge Twitter. This is a big deal. Uh, Drudge chides Obama over hysterical... Syria WMD rhetoric. The Assad regime, who's not perfect but wasn't attacking anybody, with real Al Qaeda. That's the main force. In fact, guys, will you print me the CFR thing from three months ago? Just type in CFR says we quote need Al Qaeda. That'll pull up the InfoWars article. You can print that. Then that will link to the CFR report. Print that. Now that I think about it, I want to just reshow all this stuff to people along with the McClatchy. There's an LA Times. Well, there's hundreds of articles out there saying, well, there is Al-Qaeda, part of the force, and, uh, well, yeah, they're about half the force. Well, actually, they're leading the force. Well, actually, they are the force. And we could get our liberties back. This could kill the hoax of Al-Qaeda, the hoax of 9-11, all of it. These guys out of Saudi Arabia, who they brought into Libya next to, next to Egypt, are now going up here just north of Israel and Lebanon they are now going into Syria, which is to get ready to go into Iran over here. They are openly with signs on the BBC saying, we're done with Libya, we're going to Syria. They do this, 50,000 at least. They've been given, and here's the key, not 1,000, not 2,000, not 3,000, not 4,000, not 5,000, not 6,000, not 7,000, not 8,000, not 9,000, not 10,000, not 11,000. 20,000 surface-to-air, heat-seeking, and radar-guided SAM missiles. And they are now saying that when this is in the news, this is L.A. Times, McClatchy, you name it. Our government gave it to them, our banker-run government. You understand how big this is. They are saying that they are going, let me repeat this again, to take over Libya. They did that. Next, we're going to Syria. Now they say we're going to Iran, which is Shiite, the Muslim minority, they're going to go to Iran, and when they're done, they're going to USA. And the feds, which are Federal Reserve bankers, they are absolutely going to arm them to come to America, attack us, and then they're going to take all our liberties in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda that they run. The bankers run Al-Qaeda to take over Libya, to take over Syria, to take over Iran, to take over Iraq previously, and now Al-Qaeda, run by British intelligence for 100 years, 
is going to attack America.